sun and CO2 to make glucose, the sugar that they use for food. They also put oxygen into the air so we can share because oxygen is everywhere. Welcome back. In the last video, I talked about decomposers and I touched on the concept of food chains and that energy and nutrients travel from, for example, plants to animals. Well, in doing this video, I'll cover that in much more detail because Dopon itself says explain trophic interactions between organisms and ecosystems using food chains, food webs, and pyramids of biomass and energy. So we talk about food chains, food webs, pyramids of biomass and energy. So before I start, I want to again ask a quick question. So if you look at this jungle here, what do you say it is quite peaceful? I mean, is there much going on in this jungle? Or is it all, you know, just yeah, peaceful itself? And the answer itself would be, it's not peaceful at all. There is a lot of stuff going on. So for example, there might be a monkey or a type of chimp that feeds off grass. Here it's eating grass. There might be a spider here. And the spider feeds off different insects. The spider eats insects. And there might be this here, which is a feral cat in the jungle. The feral cat might eat some of the mice that is in the actual jungle. And even the plants, even though you know, it looks like the plants aren't doing much, the plants are even competing. They're fighting each other because the plants are competing for sunlight. So plants want sunlight. And they've got to make sure they get their sunlight by being the ones which are the tallest, especially in a jungle where there's not much light. So even though it looks peaceful, and it does, you know, they usually do look quite peaceful, there's actually more or less a war going on. And this dot point says, talk about the interactions, the trophic interactions, and what that word trophic interactions means is the word trophic has something to do with food. So trophic means more or less food. So it means how do different organisms relate to each other in terms of the, their food relationships. So for example, this year, the monkey eats the plant. That's the food relationship, monkey eats plant. Whereas here, you know, the cat eats mice. That's the, inter the trophic interaction. The spider eats the insect, that's the interaction. This is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about these trophic interactions. What is what? And we're going to show that using food chains, food webs, and pyramids of biomass and energy. And I'm going to go over them now. So first, we're going to go for the food chain. And there's a couple of different words I want to be able to introduce. And the first one is producers. What is a producer? A producer is something that uses energy from the sun, uses sun energy. And what it's going to do with that sun energy? It's going to make its own sugar. It's going to make its own food. Another word for these are autotrophs, autotrophs. Yeah, what I mentioned earlier, trough means food. And what does auto mean? Auto comes from automatic, so it means it can make its own food. So producers are ones that can make their own food, and they do that by using the energy from the sun. So what are producers? Well, we've got stuff like plants and algae. These are our producers. Now, primary consumers are the ones that eat the actual plants. So producers are the ones who make sugar or their own food. These are usually plants. And primary consumers are the ones that eat plants. And you have examples like grasshoppers or any other insect or animal that might eat the actual, you know, make a cow. These will be primary consumers. Now, secondary consumers will be the ones who eat primary consumers. So, for example, if we have let's say, primary consumer being the grasshopper, then the actual secondary consumer would be the mouse. The mouse eats the primary consumer. And the tertiary consumer would then be the one who eats the secondary consumer. Eats the secondary consumer. Tertiary, tertiary comes from the word three. So it's a third consumer. Second consumer, third consumer, eats the secondary consumer. So for example, if we said that the primary consumer was the grasshopper, the grasshopper is even my second consumer, the mouse, then the, maybe the tertiary consumer could be the fox, and the fox eats the mouse. And last, we have those detriv detrivores. These are our decomposers. I mentioned earlier decomposers, such as you know your fungi or your bacteria. These are the ones when the tertiary consumers would die. They're living. Their their bodies would then be decomposed by detrivores. When it comes to food chains, what you need to do when you construct a food chain, the important parts are here again. Like I'll go through the different words again. We have our sun, which gives the energy from the sun. So we need sun, air, water, soil. All this is important for photosynthesis. And that energy is then trapped in producers using photosynthesis. 
and the actual producers are eaten by the consumers or herbivores. Herbivores are ones that eat plants. And these are mostly consumers, the primary consumers. The second consumers might be, for example, a bear might eat the actual deer. And when the bear dies, it is decomposed by the detrivores. But it also, like, for example, detrivores is anything that feeds off dead things. So it feeds off dead. So bacteria and fungi would be an example, but even your scavengers, you know, even your hawk nice, but your the ones who just they wait for something to die and then eat it, these are also detrivores. And then the cycle continues. The stuff is returned and then the cycle continues. So if you were to construct the food chain, which we'll do in the next video, we'll construct the food chain. These are the important parts. And the arrow always points to the direction of energy flow. So if this goes, for example, if we say grasshopper here. And we make an arrow to the mouse. That means the energy has traveled from the grasshopper to the mouse because the mouse has actually eaten it. But one thing that's also important is you should remember that actually 90% of the energy is lost whenever we go from one to the next. And why? Because the grasshopper might have you know, all of its energy in its body. The mouse eats it. But what the mouse does, I mean, it has to produce its own heat, it has to produce heat, it has to move around, it has to uh, reproduce. All those things, and we mentioned all those things require energy. So by the time that the mouse is actually eaten by the next one, uh, so by the time the mouse is eaten by the fox, not all that energy is going to be left over. The, fo the actual fox will only get 10% of the original energy, and 90% would have been lost because if the actual mouse used it up, more or less. When it comes to food webs, it's similar, but they're more complex. So food webs are more complex, and they're also more realistic. So they're more realistic because they show all the different types of interactions. Food chains are usually quite straightforward. They're just one way. You know, it's just this eats this, 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 whereas food web shows all different types of interactions. So for example, we say, okay, we have this green plant producer, which is eaten by you know, a mouse, a rabbit, and a goat, it's not just eaten by one thing, but even by different things. And then these things can be eaten by, for example, the mouse can be eaten by the owl, but the mouse can also be eaten by the wild cat, and the wild cat can also eat the rabbit, and the rabbit can also be eaten by the jackal. So it's just showing you more different types of interactions. So food webs are just more complex, yeah, but more realistic. So this is what we actually find. We don't just find one thing eating by one thing, but it has to be more complex. That's your food web, and we're going to construct the food chain and the food web in the next video. We also have to talk about pyramids of biomass and energy. That's the last part of this top point. And what I want you to know for this is, we use this example here. We're going to say, okay, we have oak trees. Oak trees are eaten by the caterpillar. The caterpillar are then eaten by the blue tit bird. And the blue tit bird is then eaten by the sparrow hawk. And usually, if, for example, we use certain pyramids, the actual amount will look different. So this is here is the pyramid, the pyramid shape. So you can was a pyramid shape. That's why obviously they're called pyramids. The bottom is the biggest and the top is the smallest. And I'll go over exactly what that means in a second. But if, for example, here, if you use the pyramid of numbers, which it does exist, but it doesn't get often used often, there's a reason why. This just looks at the different amounts of numbers. Now, if we use this example, we have the oak tree, which will have the lowest number. Because, I mean, there aren't that many. There are going to be more caterpillar than oak trees. Oak trees are huge. So it's not going to look like a pyramid. It's going to look like a weird, strange cake thingy because the oak trees have less number, even though they have more energy and more biomass, they're heavier. But because the oak trees are so big, if you just count the numbers, you're going to see a strange pyramid. It's not going to be realistic in terms of you know the actual interactions that go ahead. So we don't usually often use pyramids of numbers for that reason because it could, be, it could look okay, but if, for example, we have something like the oak tree that's eaten by caterpillar, it will look like you know there is... It will look like you know, there's just a couple of oak trees that feed the caterpillar, which is realistic, but we want to show like how it actually looks like in terms of energy flow, which is why we use the next two. So if we use the pyramids of biomass instead, or the pyramids of energy, what you're going to see is going to see this kind of shape. And the first one was our oak tree. And the second one was our caterpillar. And what the pyramid of biomass, biomass means biological, biological mass. So the actual weights, the, the, the amount they actually weigh. 
So this way is much more. So this is the highest weight here. Then less, then less, and less. Which makes sense because I mentioned earlier, whenever we actually go from one level to next, we have 90% of the energy being lost. So 90% is lost for every step, 90%. Which means it's impossible for these to have, in a normal kind of ecosystem, it's impossible for the top predator to have higher numbers than the bottom predator because it has less actual energy to deal with. So that's important. So it has less energy to deal with. So it's going to have small numbers. It won't be able to sustain a high population. Whereas your oak trees, which is your producers, will have higher amounts to deal with. So they're going to have more numbers. And not more numbers in this case, but more mass. But for, for example, if someone came and, and chopped off all the trees, you might just have like one tree left. What's going to happen then is you're going to see a different type of shape. So you're going to see this kind of shape. If you, let's say, someone chopped those trees off, you're going to see this kind of shape. And this is an unstable ecosystem. So first we had a normal ecosystem. Now we had an unstable ecosystem. This means that there is, in terms of mass, there's much more grasshoppers or caterpillar than there are trees, and even not just numbers, but even mass-wise. That means the grasshoppers are not going to have enough food because they have to have lots. They have to eat lots of tree leaves, which means over time, within a couple of days, this whole ecosystem will collapse. So as soon as someone takes away most of the producers, there's going to be a problem. Now we also use a pyramid of energy, and this is actually quite popular to be used because what that means is, for example, if you say, okay, you have 100% of the energy going in from the sun, so this was the original sun energy, then the tree will use that energy to make photosynthesis. It will use most of that energy to, you know, make, sh to reproduce, to grow as well. So by the time it is eaten by the caterpillar, it's only going to pass on 10% because 90% is lost somewhere. Same thing with the caterpillar. If it actually eats, is eaten by the blue tit, it will only pass on 10% of its energy, whereas it loses 90% of its heat. Same thing when it, the blue tit is eaten by the spa, sparrow hawk, it will lose 90% before it's eaten and only transfers 10% to the next generation. So what you can see here is you can always lose 10%. So 100% initially, that then it goes to 10%, but the time the oak tree is eaten by the caterpillar, that energy that's left over is just 1% of the original. Then it's left over to the next generation, the next uh, level will get only 0 0.1 of that original 100%. It's the blue tit. And then the last will only get 0.01% of the original 100%, which is the sparrow hawk, which is why the numbers, which is why the actual pyramid is this kind of shape. Because if you only have 0.1% of the original energy, you're not going to be able to have as many numbers which is why the numbers are generally, or the biomass, more specifically the biomass, the, the amount of weight, is generally the lowest for the top and the highest for the bottom. And the bottom are always the producers. But yeah, what you need to know, you need to be able to know what a food chain is, what a food web is, what the pyramid of biomass and energy are, and why we don't use the pyramid of numbers as well, generally. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.